one of the big stories, of course, or two of the big stories this week have been yesterday's hearings before the Supreme Court about whether women should have to nearly die before they can get an abortion. And today's hearing before the Supreme Court about whether Donald Trump should be able to get off scot-free and, you know, kill his enemies and whatever, whatever he wants to do and just claim executive privilege or immunity. Um, the other big story this week was that Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, changed his mind and brought to the floor of the House the legislation that would fund Ukraine uh, to a, a substantial amount, $60 million billion dollars and that uh, apparently the aid to Ukraine has already started flowing as of today. And, and apparently Russia is furious about this. So on the line with us is our buddy Phil Itner, the veteran war correspondent based out of Kiev. Uh, Philip Itner on YouTube is where you'll find his video blog. His Twitter handle is Itner Philip. Phil, welcome back to the program. So is the, um, it, are the resources getting there to Ukraine? Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, they had in anticipation of the bill passing uh, the Senate and the president signing it, they had already moved a lot of, in particular, munitions, uh, air defense munitions, but also long distance, uh, these ATACMS, A-T-A-C-M-S, um, long range missile systems, which the Ukrainians have been asking for for a long time, and which brings a lot of um, the occupied territories, parts of Russia uh, uh, proper, and then, uh, importantly, the Crimean Peninsula. And we are hearing that um, almost immediately after the president signed the bill, the attackums were used, which mm -hmm. means that potentially they were already here, <laughs> which is, you know, which is um, Interesting. a little tricky. Yeah. But um, it seems the Pentagon had already, you know, brought these things in or they got them there too sweet. Yeah. Um, but it's it, we're getting Bradleys coming in behind that. We have been under serious threat today, Tom, in Kiev and around the country. I think the Russians are trying uh, to do as much damage or at least put as much pressure on the air defense systems in Ukraine as they can before those munitions show up. Because, as you rightfully pointed out, they are furious about that. And that's a good sign that it's the right step in the right direction in defending Ukraine. Yeah, Dmitry Peskov, uh, Putin's uh, best friend and right-hand man and, and press secretary, basically, uh, went off on a rant about this uh, yesterday or the day before, just positively uh, <laughs> steam coming out of his ears. Um, Breaks my heart. Yeah, oh. yeah, same here. So uh, in another story that I was uh, that I was going to talk about at some, some length uh, after talking with you, and I'll, I'll get into, but... Uh, Russia apparently just attacked the United States. Um, there's a cyber uh, group based out of Russia that does sabotage work in other countries. They've, they've done a lot of sabotage work, cyber sabotage in Ukraine. And they just uh, uh, seized control of the water supply in a little Texas town and, and uh, you know, spilled thousands of gallons of water all over the town as a way of saying, hey, we can do this and did it live on Telegram. Um, should we expect more of this? I mean, is this are we uh, wandering into low level warfare here? Well, look, um, this is something that our intelligence and, and defense and security apparatus has known about for quite some time. I have a contact and I'll tread carefully here uh, because it was it was on background. Um, but I have a contact within the intelligence services in the United States. Uh, I'll even go so far as to say Homeland Security. And I spoke to him a good six years ago um, because those of us who have been paying attention to, to Russia's increasing um, uh, you know, uh, antagonistic efforts uh, against the West, and particularly the United States, um, you know, there's been indications that they have been inside our, uh, our various systems, whether it is transportation, whether it is energy, whether it is, uh, in this particular case, you know, hydroelectric, um, th they know that Russia is um, implementing uh, the best of their technology to do these kind of cyber attacks and prepare for it. And they have put, they are in our systems waiting to be triggered. 
So we should be concerned. I mean, thankfully, again, I'm talking to I was talking to a, a source inside Homeland Security six years ago. They were aware of it back then. So right. I'm I'm anticipating that they have been aware of it the entire time here. But Russia is trying to punch above its weight because it knows it can't fight militarily. And, you know, the way things are going in Ukraine for them, they're hoping to um, destabilize and attack the West, and again, in particular, their number one foe in their minds, us, the United States. They are they are fixated on uh, ways that they can attack us that that will come right up to direct confrontation, but will not cross that line. Now, will that be exacerbated if things go really poorly for them here in Ukraine? We'll have to wait and see, but we need to be aware that that Russia sees us as their their primary enemy. It is not Ukraine they see as the jilted lover that's been seduced away by the West. They can't get there. It's an abusive relationship. You know, the, the guy who, who has his, you know, his wife who he's been beating for years and suddenly she says, I've had it, I'm, I'm leaving. And he's like, no, you know, I'm going to teach you how to love me again sort of thing. And how dare you? go into the be seduced away it's not your fault you're being seduced away so they don't see ukraine as the enemy they see the united states and they are acting accordingly we should definitely be concerned about the potential for cyber attacks i'm curious you know kind of along those same lines only in in rather than just cyber attacks on infrastructure cyber attacks on our intellectual infrastructure on our on our governing yes, infrastructure the mind worm yeah the, the, Moscow the, the, mind worm. the fact of the matter is that uh, i believe it was 114 it was a majority a small majority but a majority of republicans in the house of representatives voted for putin rather than for america uh, just a couple yes, of days ago, yeah, indeed. And, and what, the what primary that, culprit, right? Yeah. What does that tell you about how effective Russia's propaganda has been, and 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 to what extent can you explain how that propaganda works for our listeners? Well, it, it, I'll have to do the Reader's Digest version of it, but I mean, you even you even hear from the Repu certain sectors of the Republican Party itself saying that all, we our party has been infiltrated, uh, our body politic has been infiltrated by Russian uh, disinformation and information warfare, not just some sort of milky toast kind of like, uh, you know, they're influencing. No, this is information warfare. They are attacking, they're getting into people's minds. You, The, the primary, um, you know, uh, proponent of this kind of stuff and a somebody who is clearly, at the very least, taking uh, Moscow's talking points, Marjorie Taylor Greene, putting out these these tweets that are they are literally cut and pasted from um, the, the 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 military the Russian military intelligence the GRU it's it's verbatim i mean she's talking about things like the hungarian language issue in transcarpathia marjorie taylor green has no idea about the transcarpathian hungarian language laws somebody is feeding this to her Hmm. I do not believe that she has the intellectual curiosity or the depth of knowledge of this region that she could just pull that feather out of her hat and address it. Somebody is giving it to her. Now, willingly or unwillingly, I don't know. But Russia is very good about putting the germ of doubt and what is reality and what is truth. And there is no truth and there is no reality. It will be what we tell you it is. Everything is cynical. Everything is is abusive. Everything is corrupt. And and to think otherwise is naivete. And it's all just for naught. Everything is falling apart. They want to get into our minds and tell us that um, that that up is down, down is up, right is left, left is right. Democracy it's, sucks. It, it, democracy sucks. Democracy is a farce. It's right. it's you are naive to think about things like the rule of law or the rights of man. It is it is deeply cynical and it and it speaks to an audience that has always been as with us in the United States where they were uh, you know uh, you know America uh, nativism uh, you know of the late 18th and early 19th centuries or whether it's the Confederacy or then the KKK and now MAGA they have always been with us these guys who do not genuinely believe in democracy when they lose an election they blame it on the other side that it was there was, there was some sort of reasoning and justification for throwing out the ballot in the bush, whether it's firing on Fort Sumter or whether it's January 6th. They've always been with us. The Russians know it, and they exacerbate that rift between us. It is dead.
deadly, it is violent, and it plays right into their arms. Divide and conquer. This is what the Russians know how to do, and that's what they're intent on doing. And it we looks like they've, they've divided and conquered the GOP. It's amazing. Phil Edner, Phil, thanks so much for dropping by today. Thank you, Tom. It is always good talking with you. I, I, I so appreciate our conversations every week. We'll be back with more of the news of the day and your calls in just a moment.